Hey guys, welcome back to another show. Welcome back to another video. So today I want to talk about some things, some misleading things about Vietnam and things that people kind of talk about that talks about some misconceptions of what we hear about in Vietnam. 10 harsh true things about Vietnam that you wish you had known before. And this one, the reason I'm doing it is because it was written by a Vietnamese person. So I find that we're getting away from that biasness of what people are like, well, you're just a white person or a black person or a non-person, you don't get it. So I thought this would be a good way to go about it and really put together a good analysis of what things that are bad about Vietnam that are coming from Vietnamese people. So without further ado, let's get into the article. Again, this is just 10 things that are bad about Vietnam. So let's see what we got here. So Vietnam is a popular destination for travelers thanks to its beauty and attractiveness until you see all the trash. Though it's known as a peaceful country, there are bad things about Vietnam that can interfere with your trip. Some foreigners do not want to return to Vietnam because they've had a bad experience. The 10 bad things about Vietnam that I've listed below sound clinical but I don't want them to stop me from visiting, coming back to my country. So this person is actually Vietnamese from Vietnam. So this is really cool. Um, th this is actually a rare trait. A Vietnam is a very nationalist country. So you can't tell Vietnamese that the country's dirty or it's loud or it's polluted or traffic's bad or the government's questionable. You can't say this stuff because everything is perfect, you know? So this is kind of cool to actually see somebody. The image kind of got me. I, I missed that. That's like Phan Thiet area. I don't know that area, to be honest. But let's get into it. Number one, fraud. It happens especially with tour companies and famous restaurants and stores. In Hanoi, Vietnam, you can find more than 100 similar to the Shin tours, but actually one of the booths is real. I, I don't know what this is. This is apparently a company. Those fake companies try to gather as many tours as possible. Then they send them on tours to get some commission. In these fake tours, you can't experience the best services as the real one brings. Interestingly, those fake tours are usually cheaper than the real ones. The, this is very true. This is something that kind of happens with everything. Like, you, you'll you get fake taxis. I, I don't know if you, you guys have been there during the Uber time. If you have it, you have it. But when Uber first came out, understand Uber is an American company. So this looks really good for Vietnamese people that take it because it's fashionable. So what was going on was Vietnamese were putting on fake Uber jackets and driving around. And this, I'm assuming, was a big reason why Uber ended up selling their track rights to Grab and just leaving Vietnam altogether. Because there was a lot of fraud issues. There's a lot of refund issues going on with Uber. I'm assuming, because I rode on like seven or eight Ubers when I was out there, and most of them didn't seem professional. A lot of them, they were having problems with their phone, so they couldn't verify their appointment with me. And I just was like, you know what, I don't care, let's just get out of here. And I ended up getting cheated out of money, or we just couldn't find where to go. So a fake version of a real one is not a hard thing to run into. And understand, Vietnam is a capital area when it comes to fraud. I mean, Gucci, Prada, like all these companies, fake apples, fake Windows computers, any restaurant you go to that uses Windows and has like a computer somewhere that's running like windows on it it's going to say on the bottom left like you need to activate this service everything's pretty much fake when it comes to a lot of stuff there so tips to avoid fake travels make sure you're using the right company's website i'm not going to go into the suggestions on how to avoid it i just want to talk about the problems a uh, short return of money some people are shocked when places of vietnam return candies instead of cash i can't believe he's saying this okay this is, re this is really cool that this is Vietnamese person doing this because this is something a Western person probably wouldn't pick up on. And this happens a lot when you go to smaller shops and you buy beer, if you buy candy or food or something like that. They might not have one or two or 5,000 Vietnamese dogs, so they'll just give you candy. And they'll usually, or they'll give you like, when I used to go to the market in Lazi, she would always just give you a bunch of chilies extra. And I ended up, like, I would talk, I eventually started talking to her because I thought she was just hooking me up. Like, seriously, for like two or three months, I thought she was just hooking me up with chilies. But she was giving me so many, I didn't know what to do with them. I was throwing away like hundreds of chilies every week because I didn't know what to do with them. And I found out that she just wouldn't have the one or two thousand that she needed to give to me. So we ended up making a deal because I ate a lot of vegetables. I ate a lot of eggs. So she would, what she would end up doing is like every other trip, she'd give me like five eggs kind of a thing. So this is something kind of weird if you go to a co-op you or like a bigger store you might not have this problem they'll give you the 500 or the 200 200 vietnamese dog yes 200 and 500 vietnamese dog they will actually give to you uh, if not they'll just round down or up 
if you want to be an, an a-hole about this, you can be like, yo, um, you owe me 500 Vietnamese dung. And they will just give you 1,000. It's not a big deal. Understand, 1,000 Vietnamese dung is no value. But this is funny that it was mentioned because this is something only a Vietnamese person would really catch on to. Like, I caught on to it pretty quick because I was I was realizing people were giving me a lot of free stuff. and Nothing in Vietnam is free. So I, I when I started talking to these, like, store shop owners and whatnot, they started to tell me the reason. It, it's because of change. Airport stolen check luggage. So you've arrived to this lovely country and you figured out that your check luggage was opened or something was taken. This is so fucking true. I didn't mean to cuss. I apologize. Um, and let me give you an old story. When I first moved to Vietnam, I just brought like my basics, right? And there was nothing there. There was just normal clothes, stuff like that. And I ended up buying a lot of stuff there. And when I came back to America, I went back to my engineering job and I ended up quitting and moving to Vietnam. This is when I started packing everything. I was packing, like, I had a Gucci jacket, Gucci hat, some scarves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get over it. But what happened was when I traveled to Saigon, I got my bags. I was missing the Gucci hat, the Gucci scarf, and the Gucci uh, beanie I had. This happens a lot. And so my recommendation to you is have a lock on your your suitcase. I know like in America, you can, you can claim a warranty check and they'll refund you the money or something like that. In Vietnam, they'll just look at you stupid. They won't give you your money back. They won't, I mean, honestly, they won't care. If, if you have your suitcase, they're just going to look at you and be like, what, what's your problem? Your suitcase is right here. Who cares about a hat? You know what I mean? So this is very, very, very common to have your stuff snatched. So have it locked. And if possible, have a couple locks on it. You you will feel bad at times, I know, but don't be surprised because it's quite common in Vietnamese airports. And this is what's kind of sad. I don't. His response is sad because this is showing how common it is. He says, you, you might feel bad at this time, I know, but don't be surprised. Theft in Vietnam is excessive and blah, blah, blah. We're going to go to Kip, skip that. But do be aware when you do travel to Vietnam, even if it's domestically, you're going from like Hanoi to Saigon or something like that, just assume everybody's trying to rob you. I know that sounds horrible. I'm not saying everyone in Vietnam is a thief, but just assume and just double lock everything. Uh, tips to avoid luggage per killer. Uh, so crossing the street in Vietnam, this will, everyone talks about this, but we've never read a Vietnamese perspective of it. So uh, yes, be careful when you cross the road. I'm sure it's an exciting experience for non-Vietnamese. There are not many road markers in Ho Chi Minh City, so it's quite scary to cross the road. Uh, tips for crossing. Honestly, I'm not going to get too much into this. Like, you see your little lead ninja right here? That's literally... Is that an SH? Oh, that's a vision. The idea or the trick to crossing the road is just to go. Walk slow, don't stop. Obviously, look left and right. But don't make any sudden movements. Don't stop. Don't just start dashing across the road like a maniac. You will get ran over. Vietnamese do not care if they hit you. They will hit you, especially if they're in a car. So just walk calm and go. They will go around you. I'm not saying they're going to hit you like a duck, but if you start jumping around and they run into you, they're going to blame you. So just walk straight out there. A traffic accidents. This is actually a serious one. I'm quite surprised you brought it up. Yeah, let's actually get into this one. So according to traffic department of 2016, there was more than 21,000 traffic accidents. Almost 9,000 people dead. And I want you to see that number. 9,000 people dead. I don't know how accurate his numbers are. We're not going to fact check this. But I did look into this way back in the day. Because when we were driving the first time we went to Kanto, we went all the way up to Salah. This was on our motorbikes driving up. And we saw like 13 or 14 accidents. And in those 13, 14 accidents, there's about six people that died. And we noticed something very, very common. Most of them didn't have helmets on. Most of them had shitty helmets on. Most of them would have the strap actually strapped on top. So if you had a, wind, a burst of wind, the helmet fell off. And when it comes to motorbikes, most of them are because of safety equipment. They don't have helmets. So if you're in Vietnam, wear a freaking helmet, man. And if you're doing the long trip, get the full face one. Just be safe, man, because you're going to be driving on highways with semis. You're going to be driving on a bunch of maniacs. You're going to be driving around some farmers that are half drunk. And this isn't an insult to Vietnam. This is a reality check, man. So have your helmet on. Have a leather jacket on. You get kind of used to it, but be aware that most deaths in Vietnam that are, are relative and correlated to accidents, motorbikes, are because of no helmets. Um, so there's about 24.5 people that die, people die per day due to traffic accidents in Vietnam. This number doesn't include injured people. Very true. 
Um, before I left, I was a full body driver for Vung Tao, and this guy was texting on his phone, no helmet, just had shorts on, and he was driving around the side of the road on the highway. And he, like, there was a truck, and then there's the a building, and I'm going, you know, doing the speed limit. What I was actually going a little under, but this guy came in front of me. There was nowhere for me to turn, and we ended up crashing. This dude got effed up. I was fine. I, like I had, I had a jacket on. What I had my grab jacket on. That's why you probably see the rips on when you see me wear it. And I had my helmet on. My bike got a little screwed up, but this dude, like he was dripping like thick blood. He was effed. His head was like bleeding down. Like he was effed. He didn't die, but he was effed. And it was a, it was a bad situation. Like, I couldn't talk to nobody about it. Everyone refused. And I'm talking Vietnamese to these people. They were refusing to talk to me, tell me who he was or what's going on. They told, they kept telling me to leave, leave, leave. You're a Westerner. Leave. The police are coming. So I ended up leaving the guy like $5 million. I don't know if that's enough. I, I really don't know. Is this what I had in my pocket? The point case being, he wasn't protecting himself, and he paid for it drastically. So I don't want to scare you those numbers, but I do admit that traffic accidents happen regularly in Vietnam. They do all the time. I saw them daily driving around Saigon. They weren't serious most of the time, but they happened. Traffic accidents can happen anyway. You can get hit when you cross the street, when you ride a bike or in a car, even in your house. I hope some of my tips can help you. This is very true. I actually lived in District 4. This is near District 1. This is the hood. If you've ever lived in District 4 in Vietnam, Use a real expat Vietnamese because this is the hood, bro. This is South Side LA at this point in Saigon. And there was this lady that lived up the road for me. In our, it was like a, it was a weird turn road, if that makes sense. And this guy was drunk on his motorbike. He had an SH, like the bigger one, the one made in uh, Japan. And he ran through this lady's house at like two in the morning drunk and was laying in this lady's living room where they slept with his bike sideways. This isn't a joke. It, it can happen in your house. And then, you know, if your kid's playing on the bike, he crashes the bike, play it inside the house with it, obviously. Let's look at some advice because I think this is a good thing to talk about. Using public transportation, such as buses. I know public transportation in Vietnam can terrify foreigners. Plan them before you take them. I wouldn't really do them. Taking taxis are fine. Walking, walking is dangerous. And this is something I said in some earlier videos that I did when I first came back to America. I can finally walk, dude. I walk every day like ten to 20,000 steps. I know it's a big gap, but that's what I do. You can't do that in Vietnam, really. Like, sidewalks are free game. If you're like, if you're somewhere like Dalat, uh, Hanoi, uh, Sanla, like if you get these outside of Saigon areas, you can get away with walking around on sidewalks, but it's not really a normal thing. So let's get into a big one that happens a lot. Uh, taxi scams, almost the same with overpayments. Taxi scams are common in Vietnam. It happens to everybody. I'm going to go just break it down what happens. Wood, you should use it in an app. If you're going to take an actual car, just use Grab. They have the option to take a taxi car. It's usually cheaper anyways. The big problems with taxis, like you see a Viet Sun and whatnot, is the meter will tick faster than it actually should. And sometimes it'll even start at a higher rate. And some taxi drivers, they won't even turn it on. So with that being said, just avoid normal taxis. I don't want to put every taxi company under the bus because they're not all bad. You're just going to have some bad eggs out there. My recommendation is just use the Grab app. Robbery. This is a weird one. So robbery in Vietnam isn't that bad. You... Vietnam doesn't have heavy crime, if that makes sense. Most of Vietnamese crime is petty. The crime in Vietnam is petty. It's not too serious. So, robbery happens everywhere in Vietnam. In most common cases, are robbery of your phone and bags. Again, petty crimes. Nothing too serious. Again, you're not going to get mug rooped. I have to say that out weird. Imagine you're riding your bike, motorcycle, or walking the street, your phone, your bag, one second, it's gone. You only see the guy on the motorbike go fast. This is very true. And if you're bored, YouTube motorbike theft in Vietnam. Uh, this is a very common thing. Well, me and a friend of mine, Adam, were actually driving from Hanoi back to Saigon. We finally got back into Saigon and we saw a lady get robbed. She was at this petrol station with her bag on her on her shoulder, putting her baby on the bike. You know, that has like the baby seat in the front. And this bike guy drove by and the passenger just ripped her purse off and they drove. She fell on the ground. And I mean, it was so fast. Like we couldn't even chase this guy. Like he was gone. This stuff happens fast. Again, I'm going to be honest with you guys because I don't think petty theft is that bad in Vietnam. It just happens a lot, if that makes sense. I've walked around my phone like this. I've walked around texting people in Saigon all over Vietnam. I've never been robbed. I was robbed one time. If you guys are aware of Bowie Vin, there you have Bowie Vin Street and then there's a park next to it. Hopefully I remember I'll put a picture somewhere. But there's a park there. 
And in that park, it was about 1.32 a.m. I was with Vietnamese friends, and they all went home. I was drunk. I was like, I'm going to keep going out. Like, this is back in my idiot days. And I didn't go to the park with a beer. Not drinking a beer, passing out on the bench. I woke up, this guy's cutting my pants open. My phone's already gone. So I think he came back again after he took my phone. Came back trying to cut my, like, I had a bag, like a, you know, like a, a normal bag around. And he was cutting that strap off as I woke up. And there was my passport, my money, my MacBook, like the expensive stuff. So... This was the only time I ever got robbed, but at the same time, I passed out drunk in a public park next to Bowieville. So I'm taking full responsibility of that stupidity at that point. Keep all this stuff together. Travel insurance is great, I guess, but whatever. It's Vietnam. Good luck. It, it happens so much. I don't think a lot of these companies should be like, oh, no, let's buy you a new iPhone. They're not. Uh, number seven, pickpocket. I've never had this happen to me. Honestly, pickpocketing happened anywhere. Uh, my father got pickpocketed twice. We went to a festival together. It happens in crowded places. I guess this is true. This is a big thing in China, from my understanding. Honestly, just keep everything in your front pocket. Uh, wallets, money, and all that stuff. I never use my back pockets in Vietnam. I see a lot of people put their um, they put their phone in their back pockets. Don't do that. Just put everything in your front pocket, and you'll be fine. So number eight, hygiene of food safety. This is an important one. This is something that Western people don't talk about much. Vietnamese food is amazing. True that. There is also a lot of food for you to choose from. The food safety is a big problem in Vietnam. It is a huge problem in Vietnam. A lot of kitchens that I saw in villages when we were in the central northern Vietnam, the kitchens were in the bathroom. So these we're talking the squat toilets, right? The hygiene is a very, very big thing. And I see a lot of people like they'll get their chopsticks when they go to restaurants. And this is a Vietnamese thing. You take a lime and you wipe your chopsticks and your spoon to kill the bacteria with the acid. But that doesn't really, that's barely a solution because the food itself. And yeah, I know a lot of people are like, whoa, it's cooked. You have to understand the water might not be clean. The broth of the pho might not be clean. The beef might actually be expired or spoiled or older or something. You know, There's a lot of concerns with Vietnamese food. But with that being said, I've never been, had food poison in Vietnam. The hygiene of food is bad. So street food is delicious, but most of the time it's not clean and healthy. The seller has not prepared them carefully. And because of the, the climate, the food may have some problems. This is very true. It's very hot. Food goes bad very fast. And a lot of these people are, they're just not clean. Understand, like these bon B, these bop sao day vendors that are selling fried corn and stuff, they're walking the streets all day. They don't go home for lunch. They sleep on the street. They sleep in their, like, vending spot during, you know, 11 to 1 o'clock every day. So they're not going to be properly clean. Some people will put the glove on, like, you know, like food gloves and stuff like that. But they'll use the same gloves all day. But I didn't realize how unsafe it was until I returned to Vietnam for a vacation after living in Japan. Ooh, that that's a that's a comparison. Japan is a Japan is an ultra clean country. I mean, like when I lived in Japan, like like when you have trash, you just you leave it in your pockets all day until you get home and you throw it in the trash. Like it's just so clean there. And yeah, if you're comparing Japan to Vietnam, Jesus, dude, that that is life today. Uh, and I had a stomach ache and I felt terrible about eating. How to avoid that? Honestly, avoiding it, if, if, if you really have food allergies or something like that, j just eat at restaurants. Don't eat street food. Um, I usually go over favorite restaurants, uh, he just said there. You can buy medicine, like Pet Mobismo and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm not a medical person. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not a, per I'm not a fan of medications. I, I don't think you should take medication. If your body can't fight it, you need to take drugs for it. Maybe you should go see a doctor. If you're eating food and you're always getting heartburn and stuff like that, my advice to you, I'm, again, not a doctor, not professional advice, but p drink some lemon juice. Not with sugar, just straight lemon juice. It'll balance out your acids. That's how you get rid of heartburn. Works for me. Just avoid the street food. And I talked about this a few videos ago about the water and ice and stuff like that. My advice is just eat like prepared food at like co-op stuff like that for like a week or two kind of slowly work your way into the water and the food like that because when i lived in vietnam i could drink water out of the hose i and i did it i'm just saying i could have i could eat any street food and never get sick like i just didn't get sick my body's used to it and i realized this when i came back to america and i started eating like you know organic foods and stuff like that like it hurt like i started getting these like just stomach aches and stuff and it was the food was too clean my body was like trying to fight something that wasn't there, right? Uh, bad service, bad manners. This is a funny one. This is a cultural thing. Um, Vietnamese people by nature are rude people when, it, when you're taking a Western aspect of what they do. But in Vietnamese culture, it's not rude. Like, understand when you're asking, like an example, can I please have some water? Can I have some water, please? This is the natural way to ask for it in English. In Vietnamese, you have poi vay. Voi lam. Voi lam, right? 
that that's kind of like please but like we'll just say something like chotoi chotoi uh chotoi fama right this just means like give me fa it, and to vietnamese this is polite but to a western translation it's rude because you're not saying please and you're you're demanding or you're saying like toi cho it's like i'm gonna give you right so understand before i get into number nine that Vietnamese people are not rude because they're trying to be rude. It's just a culture difference that we're not used to as Western people. Like they're not going home like, ah, oh, screw that American or screw this or, you know, that's not what they're doing. They're in their mind, they're being nice. They are. When they're yelling karaoke at their house next door at two in the morning to you, they're not intentionally like, I hope this guy's pissed off at me. It's not what they're doing. Like, it's just, it, it's a culture thing, right? So let's get into this. Many people complain that the lousy service in Vietnam is restaurants. It's true. I think one part of the reason is that it's crowded, but the employees cannot use the excuses to serve badly. I'm not going to use English as a, an excuse. Tips for best service. I'm going to say, though, like, one thing you'll notice a lot of restaurants is Vietnamese are always on their phones. They're always on Facebook. They're always taking selfies. So you are going to run into this a lot where you're trying to get service from Vietnamese people and they, they just flat out ignore you because they're playing on their phones or something like that or they're talking to the other co-workers and stuff like that. This is very common and they will not rush over to you like you will see like a Western country like, oh, sir, how can I help you? How can I help you? Or we have buzzers and stuff. Like, they're not in a hurry and you're not a priority. So, and again, I don't want this to sound like Vietnamese people are rude. No, no, no. It's not what it is. This is a culture thing. So in our eyes as Western people, yeah, this sounds rude. You would not get away with this in America. You would be fired if you acted like this in America. America is not Vietnam. How to get good service. Uh, you can use body language. Uh, capture. Okay, so uh, honestly, I just say get used to it. Honestly, but use body language, you know, but d don't be surprised and don't get angry. If you start getting angry when people are doing this stuff, you will quickly start realizing how bad your food gets, if that makes sense. Uh, a little Eminem spitting in the food joke, right? But just be chill, right? And number 10, overpayments. Over Overpayments. This situation is quite common for, for travelers. To visit a country, you look different, you change, blah, blah, blah. I recently heard from a friend of mine that her Japanese friend paid 200,000 babies dough for Bunsi. Jesus. That's like the uh, the egg. Like they fold it with like Brussels sprouts. Uh, sizzly cake. Yeah, yeah. And it's unacceptable price. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like a single order is like 5,000 Vietnamese dough. Uh, I used to pay 20,000 and I'd get uh, four of them. And then they give me like a big bag of like vegetables and stuff. Uh, I feel sad for the foreigners with the wrong options Vietnamese do overpay. And, and again, uh, this situation prevents in Vietnam. It happens to both foreigners and locals. Th this, it, it does happen to everybody. And I'm going to say, I think I deal with this, and I talked about shopping and bargaining in a different video before. I think you can see it like below here in one of these videos. You have to kind of just know what the prices are. And I'm working on a cost of living in Vietnam on what I paid when I was living in Vietnam. And I'm going to push that out for you guys. Just kind of know what the prices are. If people are robbing you, do not be afraid to walk away. Just walk away. It is not a bad thing to do. I've done it a lot. I do it at markets. I was notorious in the lot from walking away all the time. I would just walk around that loop, walking away from people till I got the prices. Because I knew I'm not paying $35 for a Gucci shirt. That's fake. Get out of my face with that. Right? So just know what the prices are. If you're being robbed, like, just know if you're paying like 80000 for pho, this is a specialty restaurant. If you're paying more than like 25000 for a, a bon mi, you're probably a Bui Vin or old, old Town in Hanoi. You're in a specialty area or a tourist area. So know what the prices are and you'll be okay with it. But I mean, pretty much with that today, I think that kind of covers the 10 things about it. I think this is a good article. It really is, because this is coming from a Vietnamese aspect. From his, And he went to Japan, lived there, and he came back and he's kind of like, this is my thoughts of how it is. So it's cool to hear a Vietnamese person's feedback on this. But I think that kind of does it for today, guys. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash that like button. Hope it's not a great deal. Let me know what you think about this video. If you like these kind of articles, I'll, I'll kind of peek, go through them. This one just popped up on me on Twitter, so I was like, ah, I might as well. But till then, guys, Thanks for watching, and I will see you again.